Hey, I'm Birdman. And I'm Bruce. And it's another Get On Target at the Hub. Hanging yes. out here at the Beautiful hub. day. Yeah, it is. Look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, we've got great weather. It's been chill- a little chilly in the mornings, but uh, yeah, all good. Allergies are kicking in full force here in the White Mountains. Yeah, I, th- I thought we'd, we'd talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we've been doing the differences with the range and stuff. And there's some training, a uh, little training issues here. Uh, and we, I want to get into one type of a gun that is overlooked. It's got a lot of major benefits to it. You're just trying to sell me another gun. Uh, you already have one, I think. Yeah. Well, my wife has one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, as we talked before about the Glock aid and making a case for Glocks, <laughs> uh, I thought Glock. we need to make a case for revolvers. Uh, they're, they're like the stepchild, you know, the one that gets beaten all the time. I right. Mean, they're, they're a fantastic gun, and I just wanted to, especially... Let's make a case for the revolver as the first gun somebody buys. I'm going to call this the uh, the spin factor. Going for the spin. This is the spin bit. Yeah, okay. Because, yes. You know, so here we have, what, what we have here is a, a snub nose revolver. Right. And you're going to, we have is some dummy rounds. Uh, and inside. Uh, don't, don't comment on their intelligence. They're well, they are kind of dumb because they don't move much or anything. These are made out of aluminum. Uh, they're like a snap cap to protect the firing pin but you don't worry so much anymore about the firing pins as you used to right but they still have a nylon primer in the back and they, they can't go off of course but we're going to use it to explain some of the things about these revolvers and i'll just quickly load this and this one holds five so you notice there's six here so we have an empty one here so you can't do and, one and, in a chamber right yeah and then normally <laughs> yeah. and then normally let me close that uh uh, normally we would be in a classroom like we are here and there'd be a, a safe area to aim this gun. Right. Which is actually between us right here. Well, the safe area is now at them. Actually, the technically safest they're way. not there. Yeah. There's nobody there. We just, <laughs> actually, there's a nice camera there. That, right. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so let's get back down to why these uh, should be a first gun. A lot of times when people are just starting to shoot, they have difficulty understanding the concepts of how the gun works. So revolvers are just extremely simple. The learning curve is simple. You can tell that a a revolver is loaded, most revolvers, by looking at them. Of course, we're still going to open it, but if we look here, these are actually a reddish color, but the live ammunition would either be a brass or be a nickel-plated brass, which would be easier to see. But I'm not sure if we take a picture of this afterwards and they'll be able to see the ammunition in there. Absolutely. a way not to look at it, of course, is down the barrel. But if you were looking down the barrel of one of these, you would see ammunition in the cylinders without looking down the barrel. Right. So you can kind of tell it's loaded, and, uh, and it's, which is really great. And then you just could open it and take it out. We would still open to make sure there's not one hidden around the corner. The more experience you get, the easier it is to tell if it's loaded or not. Right. So being able to tell it's loaded or not makes people feel at ease. Compare that to a semi-auto where you have to take the magazine out, and then you still don't know there's one in the chamber. This is much simpler to load and unload. So loading and unload is simple. Uh, the learning curve on safely handling this is extremely fast. Uh, the safeties on it are very simple. They're like we like a passive safeties, which is more like a Glock safety. Uh, they have a drop safety, of course. Some of these will have a hammer, and some don't. This is hammerless. Hammerless. Yeah, so if it had a hammer sticking out of here, and it does have one inside, and it was a fall on the hammer, uh, the force could make it go off. In the older, olden days, they only carried five rounds in a six round. So the, the hammer was resting on an empty cylinder. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do that on these because they have the safety, uh, drop safety. The other thing, uh, the other part of a safety is the amount of trigger pull. In double action, this is roughly, <clears throat> excuse me, about 11 pounds. Wow. So unless I am, uh, <clears throat> really, excuse me this time, and unless I am uh, uh, gripping the grip like this, Right. I can pull 11, 12 pounds pretty simply. If I'm not gripping it and I'm putting it in my pocket or a purse or something uh, and I hit a key, or, or right. I, I, you really can't pull that weight. Now, if it was a, double, uh, if it was a single action, double action, where I could pull the hammer back, then it would be, be just like a Glock. You'd have to protect the trigger. Right. But like this, it kind of gives you some advantages of that's not going off by itself. And especially on smaller guns, and we're going to compare it to a smaller a semi-automatic. Guns that are smaller, when you t- when you pick them up, you tend to your finger gets closer to the trigger. Right. And, and when they talk about when they talk about using these in pocket carry, we're not talking about shoving it down your front pants pocket. We're not too about, often. We're talking about a pant, a pocket yeah. within a like a jacket or something like that that's on your body. You know, there's interior pockets and there's exterior pockets, and you'll see these jackets with very large pockets that allow to do that. And that's once again, you get into that where you can't really, you know. 
It's extremely right. safe. Yeah, you have to really. That, you have to get leverage to be able to do that. Yeah. So, and, and you know. so, so that's one of the advantages, and that's part of the learning curve where you don't have to worry about, well, do I have to turn anything off or anything like that? No, my uh, safety, of course, is my finger off the trigger. When I'm ready and I grip the gun correctly, I can pull through it. When I'm done firing, I just let my finger off the trigger. I'm back into safe mode right. as compared to some of the others that have mechanical uh, safeties. Uh, so that's important. And the other thing that we never think about, and I just thought about it talking to somebody the other day, about losing parts. There's really no parts to lose. Now, I, I wouldn't take a semi-automatic. I wouldn't be out in the field taking it apart to clean it because right. I might lose a part. But there's things about semis that you can lose. And here's, I'll give you an example. Uh, you can drop the magazine out accidentally. Okay. Okay. Now, let's just say you're walking across grass or you're out someplace and a magazine is loose that's in the gun. When the magazine comes out of the gun, now your gun, it depends on the type of, of, of pistol you have, a lot of them now, three quarters of them, have what they call magazine disconnect. Mm -hmm. So when that fell out, there's still one in the chamber, but it can never fire because there's no magazine. Now still unusable. Yeah. You can hit somebody with it, but that's about Now it. that's something that you and I have probably never lost because we're more proficient, but the case of using revolvers for the first gun is because people aren't used to them. So make it simpler. Uh, I could clean this without having to worry about losing a part. You can't say that about a semi-automatic. And I don't have to worry about the uh, the magazine falling out of this. Right. Uh, now, if it was a Glock, the magazines fall out, and it still would shoot one shot because it doesn't have that. That's right. why a lot of people don't like to disconnect safety in case they lose something. Right. So that's something we never talk about. There's no parts to lose on this. Okay. Uh, and then the, the other thing is they always work. Now... Glocks are probably the most reliable of the semi-automatics. They basically work just about all the time. Mm -hmm. The downside is there's some times when it might not, but the biggest reason it might not would be uh, a malfunction of the ammo. So uh, every so many hundreds of rounds, there'll be some ammo that doesn't go off. Now, on a semi-automatic, that gets you into what they call a rack-and-tap drill that you've been through and I've been through where we practice that. Now, that's a two-handed drill. Right. Uh, now, not to get people upset because they're going to say, well, you can do it on your boot and all that. Those are more advanced techniques. But normally, a rack-and-tap is usually considered with two hands for right. most people that aren't into the tactical stuff. So learning how to do that is a learning curve. Again, we're back to this revolver. What do I do when I go, I go to pull the trigger and it goes click? What's well, going to go click because these are dummy rounds. Right. <laughs> but uh, well, it's supposed I'm glad to go, for that, by the way. It's supposed to go bang, and it doesn't. Right. It goes click. What do I do? Pull it again. I just went to the next it, one. It is go to the next one, yeah. And unless I win the lottery two times in a row, I don't think that would be no. a problem. Yeah. So that's, that's got another advantage. Like reverse rush. No rack and tap. Uh, okay. Next, the other thing is they are difficult to shoot because they recoil. Oh. Okay. Uh, but learning to grip the gun is the most important part. If you learn to grip this gun correctly, uh, you're not going to feel the recoil. Right. Now, you will feel the recoil of uh, target practicing sometime. And now with this new ammo, now that the range is lead-free, I'm not sure if you haven't had a chance to shoot the new 38 ammo, uh, it has roughly half of the recoil the target ammo does. Yeah. So you can go in there and practice this with light recoil and carry a more aggressive ammo for personal defense carry, uh, which is really cool. The other thing is some people say, well, uh, uh, they don't have enough strength to pull this 12-pound trigger. Right. We have ways to help them exercise, as you know, with their class because we specialize in gripping. But if you don't have enough to pull this 12 pounds, you do not have enough to pull the slide back on most semi-automatics. Oh, and he's he's got the <laughs> gripper there. Yeah, okay. You know, this, this, this is this is practice, 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 and this not only helps oh. with grip development, but as you've shown. You turn it upside keep down. And keep your one finger off. And, yeah. and you pull it, and then yeah. you practice. What we need to do is uh, we need to vent this, and we can put a little pressure on that put finger. Put pressure on the finger. As you're well. separate, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, that'll be the next thing we talk about. Okay. Uh, but so so we talk about grip. It doesn't make a difference if it's pulling this or it's working the slide. Right. And small semi-automatics have another problem, uh, and that is jamming by limp wristing, yeah. or we're going to quit that name. It sounds awful. Let's just call it light gripping. <laughs> And uh, if you don't hold it tight enough, it will jam. See, I like talking about correct and incorrect. You know, with a correct grip, you don't get into the issue. With an incorrect grip, then you do. And, and, and it's important to know what each of those feel and like. And it's easier to have an incorrect grip on a small gun. Right. So you're getting a small semi-automatic, and then you have to worry more about your grip strength than you do really on a revolver. You can't hold this too lightly 
uh, and and uh, it will never jam right. if I hold it light. I'm not going to hit anything with it. Right. But it would not jam. And so then the other downside, people will talk about revolvers. Well, you know, they're only five shots. Okay. Uh, and personal defense outside the home is usually, according to all, everything I've written, I mean, everything I've read, read. besides I wrote a couple of little things, but mostly everything I have read uh, is one to three shots. Yeah, so it's like 2.7. Yeah, but that's the stop. And then, uh, but for non-police that aren't involved in that, right. it's one or two normally. Right. You're touching a third of the time, your arm's length a third of the time, and then you're roughly seven, eight feet. There's not much aiming done for that. So mm -hmm. where these get a bad uh, uh, reputation is, number one, it's got a very hard trigger pull. So if you're weak as you're pulling through that, your hand shakes. And then it's got a very sight, short sight radius, right. so it's going to throw you off at longer distance. So we don't want to shoot at pop cans at 40, 60 feet. There are people that can do it. Yeah. But for all intents and purposes, we want to, we want to practice the, this thing at about five yards or less because they say it's going to be less if it's actually using it for what it was designed for. It's a very close-range gun and, and really no aiming at all. Uh, now, why do, we, why do we call it for a first, uh, a first gun? It's simpler to learn to use safely. And it's simpler when you have this for a while as you carry it different ways. And it has multiple ways of carrying it because of how it works. Right. As compared to some of the semi-automatics that need to be in polymer holsters or whatever. Uh, it, it gives you a chance to figure out how you're going to carry it and what you want in the future. You may decide that, well, you know what? I, I need something for home defense besides being out and about. This is light. I can put it in a purse or, or wherever right. I put it in a jacket or holster. So I, I just want to mention one thing because, you know, we talk about carrying it and carrying it, you know, non-holstered or right. in a pocket or something. If you're going to put this in a pocket, you're going to put this in a purse. It needs to be an area where it's by itself. And the purses and, that they make. And, you know, because something like that happens, then, you know, a pencil can go I in I did there. have one that had a dime stuck in it and you couldn't pull the trigger. Dime goes in here. Uh, dime goes in there. Uh, you can have coins get in behind the trigger so you couldn't pull it. Uh, you could get string or something. And so it's got to be by itself. Yes, and that's why it's it's nice to, if you put it in the pocket and you're wearing cargo pants or something or a jacket, you have it in one of those little sleeves that stay in the pocket and the gun right. comes out. In the purse, though, if you carry a, a bag like that, they have an actual special compartment yeah. and then nothing else goes in. There's another reason that that's a pretty good idea as compared to the way we carry them in holsters is we get daily dust mites and all that stuff that gets in your gun. You have to clean it every couple of weeks. It gets really dusty. Yeah. Uh, in a special place in the purse, it just stays there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, though, even though you, you say that, uh, my wife, you know, has a special compartment in her purse. And for some reason, you know, because of all the crap that they carry in their purses, it gets stuff in there. So How does it get? It goes through the it walls? It just goes through. It goes through the material or it goes through. It's not a leather pouch, so there's maybe some stitching or whatever. But, you know, it's still something you, well, you, you want still to, need to check it out. clean and maintain and yeah, so not just uh, assume it's going to work. Yeah, and when it comes to... Uh, uh, semi-automatics they have their own uh, advantages and that mm -hmm. would be for maybe a home defense and that would be a larger semi-automatic wouldn't necessarily be a smaller one so just not to uh, put down the snub because everybody goes oh, i need more i need more capacity yeah uh, but then it takes there's a training curve and just to get one that has a higher capacity and you can't load or unload it or take it apart or maintain it yeah uh, then that doesn't mean it's uh, viable for you so uh, I just thought of this the other day, and I thought we'd touch because we're doing so much training. Right. And more and more people are, are taking revolvers as their first gun. I'm thinking, well, that does make some sense. And, you know, I've seen the arguments online about uh, rotation of carry items or guns or things like that. Uh, you've got to be adept and, and be able to practice with all kinds of different types of firearms. Um, yeah, as long know, as they're similar. And, yes. and I think the way we get away with it ourselves, because we're, we, we're both like Glocks and we both like revolvers. <laughs> So they both have the same type of, uh, of safety mechanisms, basically. Yeah. It's, uh, your finger is one of them, and then their internal safety is the other. Yeah. So if you can pull the trigger, on, uh, then it'll go off. So it's nothing you have to think about, well, where is the safety on this one? Is it a, uh, is it a different kind of safety you're not comfortable with? Right. So, and, and also, even the grips, the grip angles are kind of close between a revolver and a Glock, more so than a 1911. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's a uh, practice, practice, practice. Got to practice, and you got to start someplace. And it yeah. seems like the easiest way to start is something that you can learn fast and, and, and learn the safety really fast, and then the rest is practice. Very cool. Um, anything else? No. Uh, uh, other than that, I'm, I, I, I kind of, uh, this is like a, a re revolver aid. Yeah. Well, it's a <laughs> spin aid. I don't know. Spin aid. We're going to have to say something. What we're Be with, with the spin or something. I'll, I'll put a cute title. Put something on it because we don't mind uh, 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 putting our opinion out. Right. Now, um, 
the range has been going really well with the lead free. A lot of people were shooting on the metal targets, which is kind of cool. Um, that's something new that you couldn't do before uh, because we know that all the ammo out there is now reduced reduced ricochet yeah. it makes it very easy to deal with um and uh you know people were coming in getting their ammo plenty of ammo available back there uh we've got uh, 300 and 300 blackout and 223 that's coming along uh that'll, that'll be better price so you'll be able to do that as well um anything else in the no, train I've realm had, uh a couple new classes okay. uh, uh that are we haven't announced them yet so i think that we're going to do that right away uh, other than that uh we're hopefully the, the ccw league we want to start yeah, now we, that we can, now that we're doing this type of ammo, now we can. The other it. thing is, it allows us to have a. I think we may have mentioned this before. We can change a, 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 not forever, not completely, but we right. can change some of the angles. Yeah. So we, instead of having to be everything the way it was before, rigid, we gives us some more flexibility to do different things for scenarios and stuff like that. So Very it's, cool. it, it'll be cool. Um, I had a, a uh, listener that uh, a viewer that actually uh, wrote in uh, about a couple things they wanted to see, uh, some around suppressors and another thing around uh, nine millimeter carbine versus regular. We're going to be looking at doing that in the future. We'll talk a little bit about the difference in, uh, well, I guess, the velocity because of the barrel length yep. for one, and then uh, the suppressor, uh, the, probably the how loud they are. Yeah. And especially in the 22s. 22s are just amazing when you take and suppress yeah, them. I, I, I love having my that's my. The yeah. most fun gun is my 22. Software. Also got a digi trigger in from a digi trigger. Uh, it's a digital trigger. It has about a 1.2 pound pull. I saw you with it the first day. I haven't had a chance. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do an evaluation on it. You're gonna yep. We're gonna bring you, that you, in. We're you were lucky enough it. to shoot it. Yeah, and uh, it, it's really cool because you don't know where it's gonna break because it's digital. Um, so it, it it is exactly what you want as a surprise. So you influence the gun a lot less as far as reacting to it. Uh, and then of course it has that it has the push pull. You know, pull, push, release, the pull, release, that's what I want to say. So pull, I'm release, uh, and then if you go quicker, it, it, it almost sounds like it's full auto. But uh, that takes a little bit of training, your finger, to... Oh, it's like anything else when you, when you change your trigger. We look, I'll be inter interested to try that. Very cool. Look for that in the future. Um, that'll be it for this edition. Make sure you're checking out thehubaz.com. Got some cool changes coming up uh, with that website here in a couple of weeks, so we'll be watching for the... Uh, under construction banner to come up and know cool. that that's happening. Uh, we'll probably put a post up on uh, Facebook or Instagram and all those letting you know that's going to happen. And uh, real cool things happening here. Always at the hub, stop in. There's always new guns available. There's always new used guns available in the consignment area. Check out thehubaz.com. Check out the Facebook page. Make sure you're following on Instagram. And, of course, follow the YouTube channel, and you can see all the great Get on Target shows. I'm Birdman. And I'm Bruce. And be safe.